This video was made by Soul and Pixel. Opening Roblox Studio, you'll see this screen here with a normal basset and a spawn. There are two sections on the left and right side of the screen. The Explorer tab, right, lets you select objects within your game. Most actual objects appear within the Explorer section. At the top of your screen is the View tab where you can open and close these tabs, although I recommend keeping them open most of the time. Most of the time you'll be in the Home tab, where you can put parts into your game. If you work solely in Roblox Studio, chances are you aren't using Blender often for making maps or other things within Studio. This means that when making things you'll have to rely on using parts for maps and other things. With Roblox's features though, you can make quite a lot with some seemingly basic stuff. You're also not just limited to blocks. These five are the main parts that you'd use to make things in game. They are each sizable in their own manner, but I'll get into how to size them the way you want in a bit. Now we have the properties tab, left, which is where you can edit things that about the parts or part you've selected. At the top is Roblox Studio's color menu. It shows a selective palette of colors you can choose from. If you want to choose a precise color, choose the second color tab and it'll open up a color wheel to select your own color. The second allows you to remove the shadow cast from the part. With the material tab you can select which material you want your part to be. In short, it just changes what its texture is. Note that materials are different than textures though, and I'll explain why. With this tab, you can change the reflectivity of the object. The reflection is basically just adding a distorted texture of whatever your skybox is. I forgot to show it in the recording but sliding the transparency bar up makes the part less and less visible. Now, there are two things called grouping and unioning. They are both useful, and are somewhat similar, but the difference is extremely apparent. Unioning is merging parts together, making them essentially become one object. Grouping is putting the parts into a model, which acts like a folder where you can access the parts separate, but will move together when selected. As you can see, scaling grouped parts only allows you to scale them uniformly. But Roblox's recent update allows you to scale unions in a fashion similar to meshes. This is extremely useful. As I said earlier, parts scale in different ways, but if you union them, it allows you to scale them however you want it. In the models tab, you can create a negative part. This allows you to create gaps and unioned objects. As you can see, it removes everything that the negative part covers. Changing the color of the negative part makes the inside of the gap the same color as it. Now, when editing in Roblox Studio it's important to know how to swiftly access things. So here I will show you keybinds.
Now for anchoring. When you run a game, you might notice that your objects fall to the ground. To change this, select the objects you want to stay suspended, and select anchor on the home tab. They will then remain in place. Before I continue, note that you can slow down your camera speed by holding shift. This is good for precise camera angles, I mentioned earlier that materials are different than textures. The difference is that materials are affected by light because they have different textures that indicate which parts are shadowed or are shown by the direction of light. It's more complicated than that but that's the short of it. Plugins are add-ons created by Roblox developers that add features or enhance it, allowing you to do things that are more difficult with Roblox's features. There are many useful plugins, but here I will show you some plugins that I like to use that are good to start off with. One is Sun Position Plugin by Quenty. It allows you to move the sun with your cursor, which helps to get the lighting of your game just where you want it. Another is Build V4 by Blobby Blob. It adds a lot of features that are not in Roblox Studio that can help you a lot when building. The last one I want to recommend is Gap Fill and Extrude by Stravant. It allows you to fill in gaps between parts. It's extremely useful for filling gaps and holes precisely and is just overall a useful plugin to have on hand. Pretty cool, right? Below the Explorer tab are other tabs that are basically the properties of your game. I won't get into all of them here, but to give an example, I'll show you some lighting properties. In short, you can change how lighting affects your game, its brightness, its atmospheric color, and other things. There are a lot of things you can put into an object, I can't go over them all because there are a whole lot of them. This is called a particle emitter, and as the name says, it emits particles from the object. You can change how much it glows, how much light affects it, its color, its size, its transparency, its speed, and a ton of other things, but there are just too much to go over. Never use toolbox models, only use the toolbox for images, plugins, etc. Never free models. To change textures for things, you can copy image IDs from the toolbox and paste them into the texture tab. For maximum color customization, use a white texture. You can also put lights into objects. This is good for lighting your game and setting a fitting atmosphere. There are three different kinds of lights that you can use. I'll show each here. The first is a point light, which creates a radial light surrounding the object. The second is a surface light. It creates a light that emits directly off a certain side of the object. 
The third is a spotlight that emits light in a cone-like shape. The next object is a beam. It creates a sort of stretched texture between two areas. You have to have two attachments in your object for it to work. You can also change the texture of the beam, and it'll move across it. There are a lot of cool ways to use beams. Similar to beams, there are trails. Trails are basically just beams, but they disappear if the object, or attachments within the object, aren't moving. You can edit transparency in menus like this for particles, trails, beams, etc. The line represents the transparency of it. And finally, the most basic thing, movement, scaling, and rotation. You can access these menus in the home and model tab. Select just lets you select and drag things around. Move lets you move things on the X, Y, and Z axis. Rotation lets you rotate it in different directions. In terms of basics, that's about it. Remember these when you next use Roblox Studio.